Hi, my name is Leah Spagrid, and I'm a ceramic artist in residence at Medalta Potteries here in Medicine Hat. I'm going to be working with clay today. Welcome to Blank Canvas. Um, so we're going to be hand building today. There's different types of pottery that you can do. You can work on the wheel, you can work with molds, you can work with slabs. I use molds made out of foam so I can cut any shape that I want to and there are two parts. So we'll make both sides and then we'll let them set up a little bit because clay is wet so it needs to dry more. And then once it's a little bit firmer, we can attach them together and start creating from there. So I've pre-rolled these slabs and I've let them set up a little bit, but they're still, they're still pretty wet. So I'm going to press them through the mold here. Um, I use a wet sponge because it re-wets the clay a little bit and it makes it more malleable. And then it's going to start taking the shape of whatever the, whatever you choose to cut your mold for. So we just slowly wet it and push it through until we get the depth that we want of our shape. Now I've set up this clay a little bit too long so it's not as malleable, but if you use a water clay, you can get really pronounced shapes. I'm just gonna keep wetting it and be delicate and slowly push it through. Clay can be really finicky to work with and there's a lot to learn. But you just keep picking up on different skills as you work along. Uh, okay, once I get it to about how deep I want it, I pick it up and I come to the other side and have a look. And then I use my finger to wiggle it through a little bit more. This makes the shape a lot more pronounced and to get the effect that we want in the end. Now I have a little bit of cracking coming through this slab just because I let it dry a little bit too long. But that's okay because we can fill it back in with ceramic slip that I've made from this clay. So what that is, is clay with a lot of water in it. And then I'll just fill in the holes with it and it'll even out and be a nice smooth surface. So this is what the one half looks like. I'm gonna let it sit here and set up some more and then I'll cut it out along with the second half. And then we'll go from there and attach them together. So because this slab is a little bit too stiff, I'm going to wet it down and then we hopefully won't get as much cracking as we did with the other one. Let's see here. Yeah, it's starting to come through really nice. Clay is really interesting to work with. It's really frustrating when you first start and even frustrating now. I've been doing this for nine years and I still have my days, but it's really rewarding. It's an interesting medium. You can do so many different things with it. You can make sculpture, functional pottery. You can paint on it if you want to use it as a canvas. I've done that before too. That's what these molds are great for too. They're so easy to make. I just cut them out of uh, gym mat or play mat like you'd put in a child's playroom. And I use a hot knife to cut through and you can cut any shape. And it's just a really simple mold. Let's see here. Okay, so these guys are going to be, or they're two halves of a dinosaur that I'm gonna make. And he's gonna be an incense holder. So we'll let him set up before we attach together. And to catch the drags from the incense, I'm gonna make a leaf. Uh, I recently just started making these shapes. I like, I've always liked fairy tales and children's story books and everything like that. And one of my favorite books growing up was about a dinosaur. So I have a thing for dinosaurs. So I thought that's what I would make for us today. 
Um, this mold here is actually for an avocado shape that I've made before, but I think it'll work good for my leaf. That's what's great about these molds is they're easy to make and they're versatile, which I'll show you guys later when I make a different animal out of the same mold here. Now, because this is gonna be sitting flat on the table, it needs to be really compressed into shape. So what happens when you compress clay together is that you're aligning all the particles in the, in the body and it just, it just keeps it in its shape better. Especially when you're working thin, stuff can warp in the kiln because it goes to such high temperatures. So the more preemptive you are with compressing and stuff like that, the more chance you're going to have everything work out in the kiln. Okay. I'm going to let that set up a little bit more with a face down. Now, because I let the slab sit for so long, the dinosaurs are pretty much set up and ready to go. So I'm going to follow the outline of where the edge of the mold is, as gently as possible. And I try not to bevel my knife either because I eventually want the slabs of clay to come meet up together and then we'll bond them with ceramic slit. I started making these because although I love functional pottery like teapots and mugs and everything, I also love sculpture. So I figured this is kind of a fun in between because he is going to be an incense holder. So he does have a function, but I'm going to build legs onto him and a tail and decorate him. And then he'll be a tiny little sculpture that has a use. One great thing about clay is that if you make something and it cracks or it's just not what you like, you can wet it down and then reuse it again, even straight to like completely dry. So there's not a whole lot of waste unless you fire something in the kiln and then that doesn't turn out. Those have got to go in the garbage. Okay, you can see that the dinosaur, the body shape, is kind of coming together. So what I'm going to do is something called scoring. I'm going to take these edges here, where they're both going to meet on each side, and I'm going to create surface area by making tiny little notches. And then I will be putting ceramic slip on it. And what this does is it binds both edges of the clay together. If you don't do this correctly or not enough, you're gonna get cracking. Clay can be very finicky and it takes a long time to learn how to use it. But like I said earlier, it is really rewarding. It's really meditative as well. I find sometimes in my studio, I have so much on my mind, I don't even realize what I'm doing. And then all of a sudden I have a whole bunch of work made. Now this is porcelain too. So porcelain is, I find it tends to crack a little bit more because it doesn't have, has to have as much strength sculpturally. It is a very strong clay to fire with. But when you work with a sculpture clay, it has something called grog in it, which is pre-fired clay and then it's ground down. So it's like putting sand into something. And that just gives it a lot more structure. 
but this clay is very, it's very soft and pure. So I have to be extra careful to score and slip very well and attach my edges. Let me give my slip a stir. I don't want it too wet because I want him to keep his shape, but I need it wet enough that it's gonna bond. Okay, from the lip. Now I'm gonna attach them together. They don't always attach perfectly with the shape, just depending on how far I've pushed the clay through the mold. But because it's so malleable, it's easy to just make them fit together. Okay, now I'm gonna slow, slowly go through the edges and press them. because I want as much bonding as possible. What can happen is once the sky fires, it gets really, really hot and weak spots will show through in little fine hairline cracks. And I do not want that. It's not part of my aesthetic. Okay. So this is a brayer. I use it for, well, I've used it for printmaking, but now I use it for clay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll the brayer around the seams and it's going to compress the clay together and it's also going to turn the turn his shape back into a little bit a little cleaner of a shape this is compressing the clay together and it's making more strength for the piece of the whole Now what I like to do is I like to go back through and make a few more notches around the seams and I'm gonna fill these back with slip and it's just an added layer of protection. Scoring can be kind of tedious, but it's a necessity. Okay, so I'm gonna put more slip into this, but I want the, the not so watery slip. And this is the point too, where I'm gonna go back and fill in all the little cracks from when I was pressing the clay through the mold. One thing about clay is that if you decide to become a ceramic artist, you are going to learn very good time management skills. So now what I have to do, because the dinosaur is quite wet from having all the little cracks filled with slip, I'm gonna have to let him set up for a couple minutes. It depends on the studio that you're working in, the weather outside, so many different factors. So you really have to be careful to check on, in on all your work and keep everything in order. So now we're gonna work on the leaf. I'm gonna do the same thing as the two part mold, except this will just be one part. And I'm gonna cut out along the edges to make our little plate. So once these two are finished, 
or once they've gone through the bisque kiln, which is the initial firing, so I can put glaze on, I'm going to use bright and colorful glazes, which is like essentially ceramic paint, I guess, to add color. And as this is a leaf, it's gonna be a nice green color. Okay. I'm going to compress these edges in. It not only gives the edges strength, but it makes a nicer edge. I like really flowy natural lines. So I'm using my sponge to create a nice flow. I'll do my best to make this look like a leaf. One of my favorite movies growing up, because I did love dinosaurs, was The Land Before Time. So this reminds me of the tree leaves. I guess that's a little bit of inspiration for this piece too. There we go. Now I'm gonna let that set up a little bit more before I do anything else because the clay has become quite moist. Set this by the dinosaur over here and check in on him. He's starting to set up. Again, I'm compressing with my fingers just to give him strength because what I'm going to do next is I'm going to poke a hole somewhere on him and then I blow air into it and this gives him more volume. So what I'm going to use is this little air pumper. I'm going to try it without any of the any of the ends first and see if it works. But, oh yeah, you can see that right there. It's getting some volume in his belly. Uh, what often happens when I do this is I poke through the weak spots, which is kind of a good thing because it ends up showing me where I need more strength and whatever I'm working on. So he blew through right there when I filled him with air. So I'm gonna fix that and go back to letting him set up. Okay, while those guys are setting up, I'm going to make another two-piece mold body to show you how variations I can make in things. Okay, so I'm gonna marble the clay here. So what I'm doing, this clay is porcelain, it's gonna turn out fairly white after it's fired in the kiln. And then this is porcelain that I have mixed with uh, red stain. And stain is just ceramic pigment that we use in slips and glazes to make color. So this will be a nice pink color. Now what I'm gonna do is wet this down. Stick it on there. And then I'll do the same for these. And then I'm gonna 
press them together and get some stripes going on. I like working with colored clay because I'm not a fan of make glazing and colored clay just gives that added pizzazz and then I can glaze, I can glaze my pieces with a clear glaze and I don't really have to worry as much. Because it's been 10 years of making pottery or nine years of making pottery and I'm still not very good at glazing. There's a lot to learn with clay, but it's a wonderful material. Okay. Now I'm gonna move this to work on here because this is drywall, so it's going to absorb moisture from the clay. And this is a wet piece of masonite, so my clay would stick if I tried to roll it out on there. Press this down. Grab my rolling pin. And then just start rolling out. And then I like to do a second cut. Go again. So I'm just trying to get, I don't want the, the two colors mixed together but I want to see the variation in the pink and the white because we're going to make a unicorn going along with my childhood interests. So I need two pieces that are going to fit on, back onto these molds. Use that one. Okay, and then we're just gonna do the same thing over again. And we'll press him back through. Oh, see, you can tell this slab was a lot wetter, so it goes through easier. You can see that cool variation. Turn him over, we'll let him set up, and then do the same, but with the opposite side of the mold so they fit together. him back through there and because these are wet we'll have to let them set up for a little bit longer now we can turn our attention back to our dinosaur he's still kind of wet do a little bit more smoothing again this is where time management comes in Now I've re-moistened him, so he'll set up for a bit longer. And one last thing I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna put some detail into the leaf. One great thing about ceramics is, or any, I guess sculpture as well, 
There's always cool tools that you can find that have different effects. So I just want to put some veins in on the leaf. Let me start. I'm going to use a sharper edge tool. Create some texture. Hopefully we'll have some glaze pool in this. And what a glaze pool is, because the glaze melts like glass, it's glass, it'll melt down and then it'll sit in all the little crevices that I've created here, making a little bit more defined. And there's our leaf. So our leaf is ready to set up and get ready Get ready for the kiln, it'll have to dry out for a little while. Um, but our dinosaurs will have to sit up for, our dinosaur and a unicorn are gonna have to sit up for a little bit longer. And we'll have to continue out next time. If you wanna know any more about ceramics or pottery, you can contact Medalta. We have classes here for adults and kids.